What's happening, everybody? On today's show, the latest on Hugh Freeze getting hired by Auburn. Auburn has their football coach. What does this mean for the rest of the SEC? We'll talk about where our brother Zach Blackerby from Locked On Auburn. Locked On SEC starts right now. Our Locked On SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I want to remind you, Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com. Use our promo code Locked On at checkout to get that extra $30 off your order. I am Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Let's jump into it. Plenty to discuss. A little crossover with our buddy Zach Blackerby, host of Locked on Auburn. And Zach, big news coming out on Monday afternoon as Auburn has officially hired their head coach in Hugh Freeze, former Ole Miss coach, former Liberty head coach. Now he is Auburn head coach, Hugh Freeze. Just initial reaction when you heard it was official. Yeah, I mean, the once the Kiffin stuff was laid to bed, I think all signs really pointed to Hugh Freeze. It seems like... We learned of that Saturday, and then Sunday, we're all waiting for the announcement, and then I think all of a sudden, you know, Auburn fans were trying to rationalize, like, all right, maybe maybe new AD John Cohen, he's trying to, you know, make one last home run, he's swinging for the fences, calling Dan Lanning at Oregon, calling Dabo Sweeney at Clemson, Luke Fickle at Cincinnati, his name never went away, and then he announces he's going to Wisconsin, and then it's like, oh. Maybe it is going to be Hugh Freeze. Maybe it is going to be Hugh Freeze. And then it was. And then, you know, in, in typical Auburn fashion, a lot of people very upset about it. A lot of people very excited about it. Um, very few people in the middle, Gordy. But an interesting hire. A um, lot of similarities to Gus Malzahn. I think some things that he does better. I think some things are going to be, um, you, you're going to have to show it. You're going to have to show it over the course of your first two seasons on the plane to see if it really works or not. But, yeah, a lot of um, lot of feelings in a lot of different ways about Hugh Freeze. Talk to me about what, like, do you do you believe? And and this is just full disclosure. This is what I believe. Layden Kiffin okay. was the target. Yep. He was number one. Hugh Freeze was number two. When I hear reports that oh, they've been talking to Hugh Freeze for weeks. Yeah, you're never just going all in on one guy and not right. having a backup plan. It seems like Hugh Freeze was the backup plan, but. Uh, how much does it sound like to you that Lane Kiffin was really entertain- entertaining the idea? I think Auburn thought for weeks that Lane Kiffin would be the next head coach at Auburn. Maybe there's a chance that Lane thought it. You know, Some people are saying Lane played Auburn the whole time. I don't think that entirely makes sense, especially when you look at the way Lane acted uh, the week leading up to the Egg Bowl. He could have easily dismissed it, and, and he chose not to. Instead, he ticked off a lot of the Ole Miss fan base. So I, I, I don't think... That was it. He got a raise out of it, but I don't think it was anything what Auburn was offering him. Auburn was throwing a lot of money at him. And then after the Egg Bowl, conversations started heating up, getting a little bit closer to the official capacity. And it sounds like there was disagreements on the buyout slash guaranteed money. Kiffin wanted it all guaranteed, and that's not what was agreed upon prior. And there was also a clause in there where if he left, and went to another coach, specifically Bama. I actually think the clause specifically said Alabama is what I was told from my source, um, that he would still get the guaranteed money, which, of course, John Cohen looked at and said, "Um, no, absolutely not, which kind of stinks for Cohen, right? Because he's getting raked over the coals. People are ready to you know, run him out of town after only being here for like five minutes, but he made the right decision. Um, And then, yeah, it seemed like uh, it seemed like Hugh Freeze was always the backup plan. What are we hearing in terms of um, co- what's the contract look like for Hugh Freeze? Yeah, so uh, Pete Thamel announced that it's going to be an average of six and a half million a year for six years, and just for you know comparison's sake, Brian Harson's was five and a quarter a year, so about a million dollars and some change more than what the previous coach was getting paid. And when you look at the amount that they were ready to give Lane Kiffin. 
or, you know, maybe some other kind of top notch hire that they were looking at. You got to think he's going to have a nice little budget to build a coaching staff around. And I don't think we necessarily know any names that have popped up yet, but I think that's going to be a fun thing to monitor. They're going to be able to offer their defensive coordinator $1.1, $1.2 million is kind of what I've been told. And it'll be interesting to see which way they go offensively with their coordinator because you got to think it's going to be Hugh Freeze's offense regardless. So we'll see what that looks like. But um, I I think that's a good deal for Hugh Freeze, and I think it's going to allow you to build a really nice staff. Speaking of building his staff, uh, look like Auburn's uh, on three uh, website. They put out a report that uh, Auburn interim head coach Carno Williams will be retained. Uh, I don't think that's any big shocker um, right? because it feels like, you know, if I'm Hugh Freeze before I'm even signing on the dotted line, I say, hey, I need Cadillac still on my staff. Yeah. And that that was some kind of rumors that emerged with the Kiffin stuff. I was never able to get it confirmed, but there was talk of like, OK, you know, if, if you're going to be here, you've got to you've got to have Carnell Williams on staff, which I don't know why you wouldn't want that. I mean, it seems like a, a nice and easy way to went over the fan base early and often because nobody in Auburn loves uh, our Carnell Williams is the guy in Auburn, Alabama right now. So you definitely want him. What his role will be will be fun to see. Is he, is he associate head coach? Is he still just running backs coach? Do they slap, you know, some kind of recruiting coordinator uh, on him? You know, that'll be fun to see exactly what that is. Offensive coordinator, maybe I doubt it, but maybe, you know, so that'll be cool. But yeah, you got to think the bigger the role Carnell Williams has, the better Auburn people will feel about it. All right. Hold it right there, Zach. I want to get more on what this means for Auburn moving forward. The hiring of Hugh Freeze as the new Auburn head coach. But first, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Omaha Steaks. The holidays are here. You can achieve gifting greatness when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender, and delicious Omaha steaks. I know I got my box a few weeks ago. We've been grilling out the potatoes, the steaks, the burgers, chicken. All of it is loaded in there, even the apple tartlets. It is uh, a perfect gift for whoever you're looking for for the holiday season. Go to omahasteaks.com. Use our promo code Locked On at checkout. That's going to get you $30 off your order. You can send an assortment of mouth-watering favorites guaranteed to impress like the legendary Butcher's Cut Filet Mignon, air-chilled boneless chicken, ultra-juicy burgers, and even easy-to-prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. Again, that's uh, Omaha Steaks. They have everything you need to give a gift that's simply perfect. Plus, with this special offer, again, get $30 off your order using that promo code Locked On. Shop early, beat the shipping rush. Whether you are shopping for friends, family, colleagues, or yourself, every order is backed by their unconditional money-back guarantee. That is Omaha Steaks, promo code Locked On. Continue on here, Locked On SEC, and welcome in our buddy uh, Zach Blackerby from Locked On Auburn, as Auburn has made the hiring of Hugh Freeze official as their new head coach. Let's talk football, Zach. What? How different is the football going to look next season? Uh, I know Robbie Ashford has already tweeted that he's excited to have him back. Robbie yeah. Ashford looked like he got better as the season went along, improved a little bit as a passer, the running ability. I bet he's more excited than anybody to get to work. I was saying this when Hugh Freeze's name just wasn't going away throughout the coaching process. I said it when we were talking about Lane Kiffin as well. If this happens, Robbie Ashford is the biggest winner of all of this. And yes, I think Holden Gurner, who's more of a traditional passer, Zach Calzada, we all know what he, in theory, can do, or at least what we saw him do well at times at Texas A&M. He still exists, folks. He's still on Auburn's roster. But <laughs> it's easy to forget about Zach Calzada sometimes, but he's still around. But I think all of these guys, whoever wins the job next year for Auburn, and maybe Hugh goes to the, the transfer portal and gets another quarterback, which I think he will, but whoever wins that job, you got to think they're going to be in a situation to succeed more so than what TJ Finley and Robbie Ashford were in this past year. I mean, Auburn made offense look difficult last year. Nobody looked more uncomfortable, with the exception of Texas A&M, on offense in the SEC this season. It was bad. It was really, really bad. And you talk about good coaches putting their guys in situations to succeed. Um, the previous staff did not do that. So Hugh Freeze is going to try to change that. You watch what he did at Liberty with Malik Willis, right? I'm not saying Malik Willis and Robbie Ashford are the same type of quarterback, but dang, Chris, there's a lot of similarities. Elite speed, 
elite movement with their feet. And what do we hear about Malik Willis when he was Robbie's age at Auburn? Well, he's electric with his feet, but really inaccurate downfield. And then over the course of working in Hugh Freeze's offense, he, he would develop into an NFL quarterback, right? So I'm not saying Robbie Ashford's an NFL quarterback or that he's a lock to be, but I think it became a lot more likely with his hiring of Hugh Freeze. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting what effect this has on everything. Uh, we've heard the reports already that Hugh Freeze is already hitting the recruiting trail because let's be honest. Thank God. I, I mean, yeah. it, it was a big it was a big spot that Brian Harson lacked in. But my goodness, you know, with the transfer portal, we're already seeing all these names being thrown into the portal. We'll get to some of the significant ones in a little bit in the SEC. But sure. uh, you got to get to work on that. And then the early signing period, which let's just take the word early signing period off. It is the signing period. This, this is where you sign 75 percent of your signing class. You got to you got to come up big here. And so. You had to move fast if you were Auburn to get the coach in place to, to crush it. Yeah, right. The, the timeline was always 72 hours after the end of the Iron Bowl. And throughout all day Sunday, we were freaking out like, where is it? What's going to happen? And it's like, this is all within our time frame. Like, we're being a little bit hypocritical here, but um, it's a little antsy, right? When you look across college football, Wisconsin has their guy, Nebraska has their guy, you know, and it's like, well, why can't Auburn get their dude tied up? And we, we've, that finally happened. So, um, yeah, in regards to him hitting the ground running, it's so refreshing because the previous guy only did like parts of the job. There were some parts of the job he just didn't show up to. And recruiting was such a big, huge part of that. And so it's like, man, national writers talking about like, all right, I'm told that he's already focusing on recruiting. It's like, thank goodness. Like, thank <laughs> goodness. Man, Auburn needs that so bad. Their roster management needs it so bad. Uh, bringing in some high school guys, maybe or offensive tackles, Chris, you know, the, the, that'd be wild. But then, you know, I, I'm told I went live immediately after this all broke. And I was getting a text from somebody that's in the scouting staff, Gordy. And um, they were, they were talking ball, right? They were talking portal. They were talking talent. I mean, they were talking about all of us. This. this is within an hour of the news hitting. Right. Wow. And, and I always think about, you know, I'm always fascinated with the idea of like, when when uh when somebody gets elected president or some like high level of office, like there's a conversation right where they sit you down. And they're like, oh yeah, so there are UFOs, and like they unveil all these secrets, right? Right. And uh, I imagine Hugh Free sat down with the scouting department and was going over the roster, and they're like, he was like, wait, do y'all not know about offensive tackles? You didn't know that y'all can like get those, and they also can like engage with defenders on a consistent basis. You didn't know that. <laughs> um, I imagine that's how that went. And you got to think that's what he's focusing on early and often uh, as the portal opens in just a few days. Before we let you go, Zach, uh, I did want to bring up. There were a few people chiming in, wishing uh, Hugh Freeze uh, congratulations. Bruce Pearls said, looking forward to working with Hugh. A lot of people sure. are making comparisons to guys who have had troubles and issues in their coaching past, but I was not the same thing, by the way, the same thing, not the same um, thing. But obviously, Bruce has overcome a lot of the stuff he had to deal with in his past and his sure. chief success. And a lot of people are looking at uh, Hugh Freeze wondering, you know, can he put all that stuff of his past behind him and, you know, be known now for being a really good coach, which is what Bruce Pearl is basically all he's known for now. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, you still see Bruce Pearl, you know, you'll see comments from other fans when I do a show about Auburn basketball or something. You'll see comments saying, you know, barbecue related things. Um, and you're seeing a lot of stuff now when you put something up about Hugh Freeze. Um, that's obviously a lot worse and a lot more aggressive. Um, you know, winning, winning fixes everything, but to some extent, Hugh Freeze will have that on him for the rest of his life. There's, there's no amount of winning that can make this go away. And whoever hired him, like if Auburn wouldn't have hired him, I'm not saying he would have been picked up by a P5 school this cycle, but Gordon, we all know it eventually would happen. It eventually was going to happen. Auburn just needed him first, right? And so I, um, I, I don't think it will ever go away. That, that's why I think it's a little bit different than Bruce Pearl's situation um, and also just the, the nature of the crime itself. So we'll, um, we'll see. We'll see. Auburn clearly thinks it's worth it. Um, I'm all for forgiveness. I'm all for um, growth. And, you know, John Cohen seems to think that um, – that it was time to bring in Hugh Freeze, pay him a decent amount of money, 
and hand the keys over. Because, look, this is John Cohen's reputation, right? If John Cohen wants to stay as the AD at Auburn, I mean, he saw what happened to the guy before him. He hired Brian Harson. He kind of went out on a limb, did his own thing with Alan Green. It didn't work, right? And then he he didn't get to finish out uh, the Brian Harson tenure. So this is big, right? If you're an AD for an SEC school minus Vanderbilt, you, you got to nail this higher. And uh, you got you to gotta nail a football head coaching hire. And so we'll see if he did it in a few years. I, I feel pretty good about it. Like if you had to tell me like who's more likely to be Auburn's head coach in five years, is it Hugh Freeze or is it Lane Kiffin? I would have said Hugh Freeze. And so if that's the case, um, well done by, uh, by athletic director John Cohen. He is Zach Blackery, host of Locked on Auburn. Zach, appreciate the time, man. Yeah, Gordy. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for hopping on the, on the live Monday afternoon. I really appreciate it. <laughs> He is Zach Blackerby. Go check him out. Locked on Auburn. Thanks, man. Thank you, buddy. All right. Uh, appreciate him jumping in there. And just to give a, a little disclosure on Hugh Freeze, of all the stuff that that has been involved with him, obviously early on there was the uh, the texting escorts and stuff while he was on recruiting trips. That was, you know, one big thing. Then there was the other thing that came out with Laramie Tunsil during the draft where it came out that some of the assistant coaches at Ole Miss were paying for uh, electric bills for his mom and all this other stuff. And then they found out more players were getting money for different things. And then uh, at his time at Liberty, there was a time that came out where the athletic director at Liberty had pre previously been at Baylor. And there was some talk of uh, sexual assault allegations and then some, some things being covered up among student athletes, not, not just football, but among student athletes. And how much was Hugh Freeze involved with that? Did he know all that kind of stuff? That's, there's all this bevy of stuff that comes with it. So I didn't want to, you know, gloss over one thing. I didn't want to make one seat thing seem like it was a bigger deal. Just want to put that it's all encompassing. But again, this is the bed that, that Auburn has decided to lie in. They will have to justify it. There's a report that came out that said, um, you know, the reason this took so long, they knew he was their guy a couple days ago after Lane had kind of said, I'm not coming. They knew Hugh Freeze was the guy, but they used these last few days to vet even more and dig into uh, you know, things that he obviously was, uh, you know, Ole Miss received uh, uh, punishment for when it was time there. And then, of course, the stuff at Liberty. So, again, you think that John Cohen is a smart guy. He's been around a long time, uh, been a really good athletic director at Mississippi State, now at uh, Auburn. And you hope that they did everything they needed to do to cover all their bases to make sure everything's on the up and up and that uh, Hugh Freeze doesn't have anything else in his past or wherever that's going to come up and embarrass Auburn or embarrass uh, himself and the SEC and all that. So say all that to say, it sounds like Commissioner Greg Sankey gave his blessing on this uh, as well, because a couple of years ago, there was a report that Alabama was trying to hire Hugh Freeze as, as their OC, I think in 2018. And basically Greg Sankey said, no, we can't have this guy back in the conference while another school is serving sanctions for something he did there. Uh, Alabama ended up hiring Josh Gaddis, I believe, and then uh, LSU had reportedly sniffed around on Hugh Freeze. Tennessee, before they hired Josh Heupel, apparently they were interested in uh, Hugh Freeze. So his name is key, has been popping up at all these SEC schools throughout the years, and sounds like now, finally, the SEC office and uh, Greg Sankey gave their blessing. Going along here, locked on SEC, and we're continuing uh, talking about uh, Hugh Freeze getting hired by Auburn. He is the new Auburn football head coach. Uh, Gus Malzahn tweeted out he was happy for his friend Hugh Freeze for getting the Auburn job. He said, that's a special place. You're going to love it. I also left a couple of old sweater vests laying around if you need them. So jokes from the now twice removed Auburn head coach, Gus Malzahn now at UCF, Brian Harson in and out after two quick years. And now, uh, of course, Hugh Freeze, the Ole Miss, or rather the Auburn head coach. It's going to just take some getting used to saying. All right, let's jump into it. Let's go around the conference. Plenty other things to discuss, particularly the transfer portal. Boots out to the right. Takes the handoff. Throws into the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. And we start at Hugh Freeze's old stomping grounds, Ole Miss, as quarterback Luke Altmyer took to social media to announce he is entering the transfer portal. He thanked Ole Miss. Uh, and the fans, he appeared in three games this season. Of course, remember, was in that tough quarterback battle with Jackson Dart all throughout the uh, summer and the fall. And the uh, sophomore from Starkville, Mississippi, 
uh, said that he loved the Oxford community, his teammates and his coaches. He was a four-star prospect coming out of high school. And um, again, Altmaier and Jackson Dar competing for the, competed for that starting job all the way up until the start of the regular season. We actually talked with Altmaier at uh, the Manning Passing Academy over the summer. He talked about how great the battle was with Jackson Dart. Ultimately, Dart won that job. And so Altmaier will be moving on. Where will he end up going? We shall see. Some other news going on around the conference. Jimbo Fisher making uh, his first significant move of the offseason, wasting no time. He fired offensive coordinator Daryl Dickey. Um, athletic uh, department spokesman confirmed that report. Dickey joined AM in 2018 uh, as offensive coordinator, which was Jimbo's first year in uh, Aggieland, but uh, his longtime assistant coach. Started his career at AM as a grad assistant back in 1985, was a head coach at North Texas for a while. But uh, the offense was not good. Aggies finished the season 12th in the SEC in total offense, 13th in scoring offense. So multiple quarterbacks, an offensive line that was inconsistent. So Daryl Dickey on his way out as a OC. Will Jimbo still be doing most of the play calling next year? We will see. Uh, AM also finding out uh, they're. They've had a number of guys entering the transfer portal in the last couple of days. Granted, a lot of backups or guys who just didn't play very much. But uh, their kicker, Caden Davis, announced on Monday he is entering the transfer portal uh, after three seasons in College Station. He will go in as a grad transfer with two years left to play. Meanwhile, over at Arkansas, Sam Pittman, and we talked about Miles Slusher being dismissed from the team or leaving the team, rather, and him entering the transfer portal. Now another guy, Malik Hornsby. Uh, thanked Sam Pittman and offense quarter Kendall Bryles writing on social media that he will enter his name into the transfer portal. He appeared in five games for Arkansas this year, finished the regular season with uh, 268 yards with a touchdown and two picks. He'd been discussed throughout the offseason. They were trying to find him ways to get him involved, you know, in the backfield or at wide receiver. Sam Pittman said, I told him that we need him on the field. He has to earn the right to get on the field, but we need him on the field. And uh, a couple months ago, Hornsby deleted all Arkansas references from his Instagram. And, uh, of course, at one point, Cade Fortin jumped him on the depth chart. So Malik Hornsby entering the transfer portal. We'll see where he ends up. Over at Kentucky, Mark Stoops finding out a couple of his wide receivers entering the transfer portal. Chauncey Magwood, he took to Twitter stating he will hit the transfer portal next week. Uh, as well as Demarcus Harris at Zenits of On3 Sports reporting that uh, he will enter the portal. He had four catches for 90 yards in 12 games with the Wildcats. Now, uh, Kentucky, they rushed for only 3.3 yards per carry this season. Running backs coach John Settle, he was relieved of his duties on Monday after two seasons with the Wildcats. So uh, a coaching change there already, according to Matt Jones of Kentucky Sports Radio. The biggest reason for Settle's firing was his lack of production in the recruiting department, not his actual coaching of the running backs. I mean, Chris Rodriguez was in there and healthy. He was really good. A few other notes. Mark Stoops unofficially kind of confirmed that Barry and Brown and Dane Key, the two dynamic freshman receivers, are going to be back. He said, quote, yesterday, we've got a lot of dynamic pass catchers coming back. It is a really good group. Uh, Stoops also said he talked with Will Levis about his bowl decision, said the quarterback is banged up physically and mentally, not ready to discuss a final decision yet, but stressed his legacy is cemented either way. Definitely needs a little time right now to see how his body reacts. So that is the latest from Mark Stoops. Meanwhile, over at Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz finding out that uh, Mizzou defensive back DJ Jackson uh, announced Monday night that he is entering the transfer portal after two seasons in Columbia. Thanked his coaches, professors, advisors, and teammates. He's a sophomore from Dallas, playing 11 games as a freshman last year, making three starts at the end of the year, uh, but did not record any stats this year, so probably why he has entered the transfer portal. Over at Florida, Billy Napier, going to see a lot of roster turnover throughout the transfer portal. Cornerback Avery Helm, uh, Rivals reporting he is heading into the transfer portal uh, and that Rivals also saying the Gators are expected to have double-digit players moving on 
Uh, Helm started at cornerback in the first four games this season, appeared in 10 games, but did not play in the final two games of the season. Last year, he started nine games and appeared in 11. Over at Alabama, they've had a couple of their players, backups, kind of moving on to the transfer portal. Another one in offensive lineman Damian George. He entered the transfer portal, so he will be moving on as well. So, again, a lot of movement, a lot of stuff going on. Oh, Vanderbilt uh, wide receiver uh, Devin Bodie moving on as well, entering the transfer portal as a grad transfer. Appeared in all 12 games in 2021, but just six games this year before he suffered a season-ending injury. So some movement there. And then, uh, oh, one more Mizzou note. This is from On3 Sports. It's kind of funny to announce this because Dominic Lovett, as we know, third leading receiver in the SEC, announced he's entering the transfer portal. On3 Sports coming out yesterday to report Mizzou five-star wide receiver Luther Burden has announced plans to remain at Mizzou in 2023. He did so while endorsing a line of potato chips as part of an NIL deal. And uh, on the social media, put up a picture of him with a chip literally on his shoulder. So, again, uh, everyone finding creative ways. I just thought it was funny. They they announced, you know, a breaking news. He's staying at Missouri. <laughs> it just seems funny to have breaking news. I'm not going anywhere, guys, after my freshman year of college. But that's where we are. Meanwhile... Over at Ole Miss, uh, Isaiah Woolard announcing on social media that uh, he is uh, moving on. He said to my teammates, my brothers, thank you for the bond we have created. So with that being said, I will be entering the transfer portal uh, December 5th with one year of eligibility left. And then over at South Carolina, a little bit of uh, surprising news that uh, offense quarter Marcus Satterfield is reportedly heading to Nebraska to go be their offensive coordinator. Kind of an interesting uh, news there because uh, Satterfield kind of a few weeks ago, the thought was, oh, South Carolina's going to be moving on from him because they didn't get what they wanted out of uh, or won't get what they wanted out of the offense. And then these last two weeks, Spencer Rattler was in Fuego and they come and uh, put up 60 points against Tennessee. And then they beat Clemson for the first time in a long time, winning that one 31 to 30. And, I think some South Carolina fans were calling, ah, okay, well, maybe Satterfield has got this thing back on the tracks. Maybe he'll, he could stay. But, uh, again, uh, Nebraska report coming out that Satterfield is heading over there to go be OC under new head coach Matt Rule. And there you have it. That is the latest news going on around the conference. We're going to have so much stuff happening in the coming days to weeks with, uh, obviously, the recruiting cycle going on the early signing period almost here upon us the transfer portal we got news of guys jumping into the portal every day so we got tons of stuff to get to and discuss thank you guys again for making locked on sec your first listen every day for your second listen today go check out the locked on sports today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide locked on sports today available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordy. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. We'll be back tomorrow right here at Locked on SEC.